Alright, lesson 4.6, analyzing quadratic functions of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, of course, the general form of the equation. Uh, what we're going to be doing is looking um, at a different way rather than completing the square for being able to find different characteristics of uh, quadratic in this format. All right? So specifically what we're going to be looking at is uh, when it can be factored. So that's the plan. When the equation of a quadratic function is in general form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the constant term c is the y-intercept. So whatever you see um, an equation in this format right here, that c is always giving you information as far as what is the uh, y-intercept of that graph. If we find out that the equation is factorable, the x-intercepts When the general form of the equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c can be written in factored form uh, as y equals a onto x minus x1, x minus x2, then the x-intercepts of the graph are, of course, just x1 and x2. When y equals ax squared plus bx plus c can be written as a slightly different form, y equals a onto dx, minus x1, just makes basically meaning that there is a coefficient in front of the x. And the same thing with the next one, ex minus x2. What we know is we know that those intercepts of the graph are at x1 all divided by d and x2 all divided by e. All right? And so what they've done to determine that is they've basically just set those brackets equal to 0 and then rearranged it for x. And you'll see how they would have gotten it like so. The x-intercepts are symmetrical about the axis of symmetry. So they can be used to calculate the constant term in the equation of the axis of symmetry. So the equation of the axis of symmetry is quite easy. All we do is we take your x1 coordinate and add it to your x2 coordinate and then divide by 2. As an example, let's say we have this sketch over here and we have a quadratic passing like that. If you find out what that coordinate is and you find out what that coordinate is, add them together and divide by 2, you'll be able to find what that axis of symmetry is. The constant term in the equation of the axis of symmetry is the x coordinate of the vertex. So the y coordinate of the vertex can be determined by substituting in the equation of the quadratic function. So I'm going to go through uh, some examples of explaining everything that I did up there. I know there was a lot of theory to this one. Um, but you'll see that's uh, not too bad. It's using a lot of the skills that we've uh, developed already this year. So example one says, identify the intercepts, the equation of the axis of symmetry, and the coordinates of the vertex of the following graph. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do with this is we're going to uh, try and factor it. All right, so let's give it a try. Uh, the first thing, actually, I wouldn't mind you guys noting is that right here, that tells you one of the things that we're looking for. It tells you what the y-intercept is. So let's just note that that answers one of the parts of the question. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to try and factor this question. So I was just uh, write it out to start with y equals negative 2.5x squared minus 7.5x plus 10. Okay. So to start factoring this, I'm going to go and I'm going to factor out a negative 2.5. So we always want to try to get our x squared term by itself if we can. When we factor this out, we have now x squared plus 3x minus 4. Okay, so I've just taken a negative 2.5 out of it. And the beauty of this is, you can see that this factors very nicely. We have x and an x like so. We're looking for numbers that multiply to give you negative 4. That have a sum of 3, and that, of course, is positive 4 and a negative 1. All right? So if I take both of these and set them equal to 0, both of these brackets, I have x plus 4 equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0. And these are going to be our two x-intercepts of the graph. So we have one at x equals negative 4, and one at x equals 1. All right, so maybe I'll just highlight these. And then on the outside here, I'll denote what they are. These are my x-intercepts. So because I've already uh, found my y-intercept, and now I have my x-intercepts, all the intercepts are good to go. Now, if you recall from the uh, notes above, I said that when you have those two uh, intercepts, what we can do is we can find the axis of symmetry. So I'll do the axis of symmetry right here. So all you do is you just take negative 4, and you add 1 to it, divide by 2. So this is going to be what the axis of symmetry is. And when we do this, we have negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3 over 2. 
So we can write it like that, or you could write it as negative uh, 1.5 if you like. So any of these, uh, I'm going to go with the, uh, the decimal representation. Any of those would work, but uh, I'll write that my axis of symmetry is x is equal to negative 1.5. So if you come back up to the question here, we've determined uh, the intercepts, uh, the x and y intercepts, the equation of the axis of symmetry, but we've not figured out the coordinates of the vertex. Well, we know that the, we know one part of the coordinates of the vertex. We know that the x coordinate is going to be whatever this axis of symmetry is. In order to find the uh, y coordinate, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that uh, axis of symmetry, my x coordinate, if you will. I'm going to substitute that back into the equation. So I'll just write maybe a little note here in black for you guys to get the vertex substitute. the axis of symmetry into the original equation. So the original equation was y is equal to negative 2.5x squared minus 7.5x plus 10. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to substitute the negative 1.5 in for all those x's. Like so, and like so. Right, when you solve this, I've already done this on my calculator, but what you end up getting is you get 15.625. Lastly, you would write your um, vertex as the x-coordinate first, so negative 1.5 comma 15.625. That being the last thing that we needed for this question, the vertex. Right, example two says simply sketch the graph of each quadratic function. Now, the difference between sketch and graph something is that when I ask you to graph something in this course, I'm going to want it to be precise. Sketch means I just want a few of the characteristics of the graph, all right? So it doesn't have to be uh, pinpoint. So let's give this one a try. Now, when you get a question like this that wants you to sketch uh, in this section, what I want you to do first is I want you to check to see if it uh, is factorable. So if you can use the method that we learned on the page before. So I'll just write a little bit note little note on this side, check to see if it is factorable by using the discriminant. And for those of you that may have forgotten, the discriminant is that b squared minus 4ac. All right. And what we know is that when you substitute, the, substitute these values in and we find out that um, the discriminant is equal to a perfect square, then we know that's factorable. If it isn't, then it is not factorable. And then we'll have to use the uh, completing the square method. So let's take a look. If I substitute my b in, my b in is the 10 minus 4 times a, and a is negative 2, c is negative 14. We get 100 minus... 112, which is equal to negative 12. Now this is not a perfect square. So since it's not a perfect square, we know that it's not factorable. So because it's not factorable, I'm going to have to go and solve this using a different method to try and find um, what this graph is going to look like. Okay, so I'll start now with my equation down here. And since it's not factorable, you cannot use that factoring method. So I'm going to use the completing the square. Now we've had practice with this. You guys should be pretty good. You might want to pause the video here and try this one on your own. So to uh, complete the square, I'm going to factor out a negative 2. Like so. And now from there, I'm going to take that middle term. So the negative 5x, I'm going to divide it by 2 and then square it. So you divide it by 2, you get 2.25. And then when you square it, you get plus 6.25. 2.5 minus 6.25, like so. All right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out that last term. And remember that when you uh, pop it out, it's going to have to be multiplied by that leading coefficient, the negative 2. So that's going to give me a plus 12.5 minus 14. So now we have negative 2. You have enough uh, information now to go ahead and complete the square. This just turns out to being a negative 1.5 outside. Uh, all we do is just take that term and divide it by 2, so it'll give you a uh, negative 2.5. All right, so now we have lots of good information about this graph. 
for instance. All right, we know that the vertex is at 2.5. So remember, you always take the positive value, take the opposite that you have here, and the negative 1.5. All right, and uh, we can now go and sketch this. So I'll just draw ourselves a little bit of a graph to sketch this guy on over here. Let's uh, put where our vertex is. Our vertex is at uh, 2.5, so I'll just go 1, 2, 3, so 2.5 would be halfway, and then down 1, 2, so right around there. Okay. Now, since the graph is has a leading coefficient right there that's negative, we know that's going to be opening uh, downwards, All right. so it doesn't have any x-intercepts. Uh, um, recall that since the uh, leading coefficient was a 2, you know the graph, uh, if you remember, we did this earlier in the year, it goes normally over 1, down 1. Because it's a 2, it's going to go over 1, down 2, so maybe approximately to here and here. Next point would be over um, 2, down 4. Normally, because it's a 2, it's going to be down 8. So ballpark figure, here's a good sketch. We've got something that looks like so. Okay, so that's fine by me. All I was looking for is a uh, approximate sketch like so. Example 2b, y equals 4x squared plus 12x plus 5. What I'm going to do here is see if it's factorable. If it's factorable, I can use the uh, method that I used on the first page. If it's not, I'm going to have to complete the square. I will start by using my discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. So my b is the middle term, the 12, minus 4 times the 4 and the last term, the 5. This gives me 144 minus, uh, what's that, 80? And when we subtract those, we get 64. Now, since this is a perfect square, we know that it is factorable. Okay. So, uh, to do this one, maybe I'll do this one in blue here. Uh, what we can do is we can use your factoring skills. So, in order to factor this, you would look, is there anything you can take out right away? There isn't. So, as a result, you're going to have to use the composition method, or what I like to call the um, AC method. So I will have 4x squared, my a times c, maybe I'll do it over here. a times c is, 4 times 5 is 20. Numbers that multiply to give you 20 that have sum of this middle term would be 10 and 2. So I'll write this as 4x squared plus 2x plus 10x. Remember, it doesn't make any difference what order that goes in. And now we'll see what I can factor. From the first two terms, I can factor out a 2x, leaving me with 2x plus 1. From the next terms, I can factor out a 5 positive 5, leaving with 2x plus 1. So one of your factors is 2x plus 1, and the other factor is 2x plus 5. Now if I set each of these factors equal to 0, this will give me an indication. So this one is going to give me x is equal to negative 1 half. This one's going to give me x is equal to negative 5 over 2. And so if you want, you can write those as a decimal. This would be negative 0.5, and this one would be negative 2.5. These are my coordinates, um, sort of my x, uh, my x intercepts, I should say. All right. And so now, since I have my x intercepts, you have enough information to perhaps figure out a little bit more of this graph. Uh, we can find out where the vertex is. All right. So if I take this, let's say, so maybe I'll just note that those are my x intercepts. Let's say right now I want to try and find the axis of symmetry. Well, what you can do now is you can take the negative 0.5 and just add the negative 2.5. All right, and we'll divide that all by 2. So negative 0.5 minus the 2.5 there is going to give you negative 3 over 2. Or you can write that as negative 1.5. So that would be your x. Sorry, your axis of symmetry right there. Okay. Lastly, in order to find the vertex, so if you have all this information, you're going to have uh, a lot to give yourself a nice little graph right here. I'm going to take that x equals to negative 1.5, and I'm going to substitute it back into my original equation. That'll give me my vertex. So y is equal to 4 brackets negative 1.5 all squared plus 12 onto 1.5. Sorry, negative 1.5 plus 5. When you put that all into your calculator, what you're going to get is a nice uh, answer is negative 4. That tells me that the coordinates of my vertex are at negative 1.5 and negative 4, like so. So now that we have all this uh, beautiful information, we can go and give ourselves a pretty accurate sketch here. So try to put on as much stuff as you can to make it as close as you can. Uh, the first uh, x-intercept I see is over here at 2.5, so maybe I'll put it right here. Next one was at negative 0.5 right 